for pandemic rollout right i'm pretty interested about this because <sighs> I think as a lot of us have kind of gleaned from what's happening, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a long time before things get back to normal, how they were prior to this whole pandemic. But I'm interested to see how different countries, different governments decide to get people back into the workplace and also live in everyday lives. And just how does it happen? And also the changes that are going to happen, that are going to, you know, there are going to be some everlasting changes that are going to affect us, you know, for for decades. Uh, but just the... In, because usually you see it that uh, you know it's close, it's easier to shut something down than it is to restart something for the most part right anyone that's front of house party where police officers have shut it down and you try to restart it again you always lose a couple of people here and there the vibe kind of dies out and it's never really the same because everyone's kind of worried it's going to get closed and same would apply for a country being shut down b- the pandemic so there's interesting approaches that they're doing um there's this paper i recently saw from harvard um that's essentially a roadmap that kind of details a plan that they're trying to go with and there was one bit that i thought here that was really interesting i'm trying to get up for you guys check this da, 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 da. copy so this is the uh, this is this plan that i found it's like a roadmap for pandemic resilience um, that kind of essentially gives us a, an idea on what we can expect or how we can expect things to go back to normal. So if you're just listening to this, you've got phase one, two, three, and four, which essentially one is where we're at now in May. And then it goes to four where we are basically all back up and running, doing what the things that we love best around August. So my initial um, estimation of it being September kind of is laid true to bear. But my overall skeptical kind of analysis was that we'll probably get back to normal next year, like spring. Because the way I thought about it was that, you know, there'll be a couple of industries that will get take time to pick back up again. There won't be the same amount of people supporting those businesses in the first place. Because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that are stuck at home now that'll be like, you know, as soon as this thing is over, I'm going to go to my local restaurant. I'm going to support them. I'm going to eat out every every night with my friends and family and reconnect so I can give those guys money and tip them well and blah, blah, all these you know really cool things but there's going to be a few people also who are kind of a little bit hesitant about heading out they're going to be a little bit worried um, they're going to maybe tell their friends they're worried tell their f- family members that they're worried and they have you know some sort of trepidation behind putting themselves in that kind of environment or that or putting themselves in a place of risk so they're going to take some time to get reintegrated back into society in the usual way they were before and it's just going to be some people who are just going to lose flat out right there'll be some people who are going to move away who are going to decide to you know uh what you call to strip down on the e- extra curricular activities and just get back to the you know bare minimum live a quote-unquote minimalist lifestyle that's going to impact us so i would say personally just from a you know um if everything doesn't go as we please as we want it to go and if you know there's a second peak and you know so somehow god forbid another epidemic comes out of nowhere i would say for it to get back to what you remember as normal quote unquote definitely next year's spring you would see uh, probably less people are and about wearing face masks whereas here between now and the end of the year you're gonna see everybody afraid to touch everybody no one's staying next to each other in shops people are fighting because someone's too, too close to them people wearing face masks people wearing gloves people spraying the air with fucking you know air freshener and shit and antibacterial spray there's gonna be some madnesses happening between now and the end of the year don't be surprised to see it but i think by spring people would have chilled out they've got it out of the system and people then will be a little bit more relaxed but i thought the plan was um pretty interesting about what it says in terms of businesses so you've got phase one you've got stabilized essential sectors um at one point you maintain social distancing you test trace and provide um supported isolation and then you retrain people to replace COVID essential workers and experiment with testing then phase two you've got expand essential workers expand essential workers to include short medium and long-term needs address continued shortages in the essential se- sector and modify social distancing to expand uh, essential workers which is going to be difficult because of course you're not including the month of june there i think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be tempted by the weather because especially in london you know london is known for having pretty shitty weather and it's always raining and whatever it may be but it's been really beautiful these last couple of days and it's already you know testing people just patience so that month in the middle that i haven't mentioned here that june is going to be the one where it's going to be really crucial that people kind of knuckle down and band together because already you know we're just you know approaching the last week of april coming up now and people are already suffering they're really getting tempted to go out so i can't see this holding <laughs> um holding on any i can't see this kind of this thought being able to be maintained uh with may and june still come up coming up let alone july 
and then you head into phase three it says in collective stay at home so that will be when everybody will be allowed to quote unquote go out but it won't mean the businesses will be back because that's one thing i was curious about before i was like oh if they just open the floodgates again or if they just start streaming that's why i wasn't sure that they would put live events back on again before august which is i think the date the fa are telling all the i think the fa was at europe or something maybe over europe uh yeah the european the uefa might be telling the prem the football leagues around the world that they want to restart their competition in august so that means the uh, premier league season has to be done before then right to sort out the places for next year or whatever um but i don't think that's going to happen we already have news already now that netherlands um the dutch league the eredivisie have supposedly um postponed the entire season they can bring it up it's null and void because they won't be able to start it up and uh before september so it was my it was kind of my um hesitance or my kind of suspicion was that i wasn't very i wasn't sure they would be able to put on live events especially stream them uh, on tv or whatever or have you know i remember some german chairman saying that they were going to have uh, screens all up around the outside of the stadium and have cars parked in a car so you can watch it you know like those old school cinemas in america where you sort of like drive in a, in a car park and shit and watch them in out loud in public over maybe in the open air sort of event but i thought that would just encourage people to kind of break out and you know not obey social distancing measures but if they can do it in tandem or if they can do the um kind of reducing the kind of sh- no if they can take off the shackles and say hey you guys can come out your houses before the season starts it makes things a little bit easier you don't get people getting tempted to run out before the uh, restrictions are lifted but again who else who is going to be out because you know i don't know you have to be i'm not sure how desperate i am for a drink to go out to a busy bar straight away you know there might be a period of like isolation for yourself just to like make sure that you're okay to kind of get make sure the you know the few dregs are it's like those is it ants is it killer ants or is it rats in new york i remember hearing that they're so sophisticated now or that you know from exposure to so you know i guess if you're exposed to sophisticated traps or poisoning systems you end up getting a bit more smarter so the rats in the new york subway have developed a way of somehow sending their more weaker brethren and sisters out in front to test if the food that's laid out isn't covered in poison or whatever maybe um so that would happen in <laughs> in uh, odds to for us too as a humankind right there'll be people who'll be like you know what let me let the dregs go out let me let all the over excited people go out first let people you know let like a whole of people catch it again and then what and now kind of come out once everything is sorted or there's some people are just like you know what i'm not coming out until the vaccine is around so that's one so that's july looks like late july here yeah? so um and stay at home so it's like mobilize another 10 percent workers in the central sector recruit community organizers and social service agencies to support communities in need temporary relax regulations allow necessary modifications late july then four you've got the full pandemic resilience return 20 percent at home workers at off offices reopen schools so that's kind of like when everything kind of picks up again um which is in kind of august time and again it's only dependent on you know the peak not being as harsh as it as they're forecasting or some other crazy thing that we haven't kind of factored in coming into play but that kind of lays it out quite well and i think for anyone that's involved in the creative music scene i think this explains why stuff like you know junction 2 and all that sort of stuff had to be cancelled because they could have probably got away with pushing it back to august but they still have to you know get the equipment um get the people in and need to work on it you know all that sort of stuff get the licenses done before the august day anyway so with everything being shut down and people working in limited capacity just make it too difficult that's why a lot of people are postponing because i'm sure a lot of them were under the assumption that you could potentially do an event in september october but there's no guarantee you're going to have people come into it anyway that's the thing you have to kind of keep in mind just because something's open especially you know i don't know so um that gives me the idea that again i think there's going to be a need for a lot of underground and DIY promoters to put on you know sort of open air illegal parties just to kind of fill that void for the time being for the people that don't mind doing it and then the quintessential you know standard clubs where you have to pay an entry and the security and there's bars and stuff and there's toilets they'll have to wait until uh, the latest September to get going in that regard and then I'm assuming there'll be some um, no, psycho DJs that are able to tour towards the end of July still and kind of do their first t- couple of shows I'm assuming depending on where they go in the world there might be a lot more relaxed laws and i don't know some parts of southeast asia that might wanna yeah that might be a new thing too you might see you might see a big you remember when all the middle east countries 
I say Middle East countries. Like, was it sometime last year they did some festival that Peggy DJ that Peggy Goo and everyone was getting angry at her because you know supposedly these guys don't have the best um, human rights uh, record in the world and she took that payday right? Remember all that stuff. So I'd imagine there'll be a lot of Southeast Asian or festival organizers, party promoters putting on events in the hopes of uh, in the hopes of helping to repair the image of Asia worldwide in it because you know. As much as some, you know, Western-based, European-based um, Asian people are upset about it, unfortunately, you know, the narrative that we have going on at the moment now is that, you know, this virus stemmed or, you know, sprung up from China because you guys eat bats and shit. So because of that, there's going to have to be a concentrated effort from, you know, of course, people that live in the Western side of it, the Western side of the hemisphere uh, with other major descent to educate people, let them know what's really happening. I don't know, present different <laughs> a point of view maybe let them know that you're not from china and you're from south korea or some shit there's gonna be a need to do all that and then there's gonna be a need from the state from the countryside too to make sure that they have those people coming in because i'd imagine a place like bali you know a place like vietnam a place like singapore a place like thailand uh china even to a certain extent you know they rely quite heavily on you know that tourism money coming in year in year out so you can't have that drab all of a sudden especially if people then decide to take away your manufacturing because that's a conversation two people are having in it right that we're too interconnected we need uh, to pull away and have manufacturing return to you know our own countries which is something that i'm probably i'm sure won't probably end up happening because they'll end up noticing how much it actually costs to produce stuff here and be like you know what fuck that it's just it to delhi and wherever else 